What? What, what, what? What the hell is this? Harumph, 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 harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Give the governor harumph. Harumph. You watch your ass. I see you shiver with anticipation. Let the show begin. Hey, hey, everybody, this is David Heretic coming at you with another edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. And tonight. Tonight! Okay, we're coming back to Pink Floyd. Yes, indeed. Pink Floyd fans, feeling you. Come on now. Here we go. This is a request from Jason Cart, and this is actually one of Jason Cart's three prioritized requests for the month of December for being a gold tier member on the Patreon page. So, here you go, Jason. Hope you enjoy the show, man. Uh, Jason wanted to see me react to this song by Pink Floyd called High Hopes. Now, have I heard the song before? No, I have not heard the song before. To the best of my knowledge, uh, this is not a song by Pink Floyd I've ever heard before. Uh, from what I understand, this song appeared on the album The Division Bell, which I actually never listened to. I, as far as I know, I've never heard it. Now, look, there's always a possibility I may have heard the song in passing and I just don't realize it. So it's always, if I start listening to the song and I suddenly go, oh, okay, yeah, I, I recognize the song now. I'll let you know. That's the truth. You know me, I'm going to be honest with you guys. This was posted by Pink Floyd, and the video has 417,318 views. It'll get you there. Other than that, there's really nothing else left to say. Link to the original video will be down below in the description for your viewing pleasure at your leisure. Let's get started. What do you say? Are you ready? Are you ready? Because here we go. All right, here we go. Pink Floyd, High Hopes, Pulse, restored and re-edited. So this is from the Pulse concert. Okay. Um, like I said before, I've never actually watched this entire concert video from start to finish. I've seen bits and pieces. So maybe I have heard this before. I I don't know. I, I have no clue. I, trust me, though. If it, if it starts to sound familiar, I will let you know. I promise. All right. Let's do this. All right, boy. Let's do this. Right, I think we'll get straight on with it. This is called High Hopes. Right off the gun, I am thrilled to see that they're using an actual bell and they're not just using track you know what i mean or a keyboard patch or something like that now they're actually using a real bell i love that thank you i know that thing is probably a ton and it, it it's probably a pain in the butt to set up but it trust me it's appreciated it really is <laughs> Small creatures 
Trying to tie us to the ground To a life consumed by slow decay The grass was green Time out. <laughs> Time out. Going up in the upper register there. That sounded nice. Okay. Um. So far, it's it's a little bit of a mellower tune. Okay, that's fine. Um, going back to that bell, it's on the upbeat of two and on the upbeat of four. So it's one and two, bang, one and two, bang, one and two, bang, three and four, bang, one and two, bang, three and four, bang. It's consistent. It is absolutely consistent. In a way, the bell right now is substituting for the kick. You know, it, it's helping the song keep a nice steady pace which is really really good uh you can set your clock to it and that's that's important something in the song has to be consistent something in the song has to keep the for lack of a better word no pun intended i swear something in the song has to keep the pulse going forward and uh, right now it's that bell more than anything else which is really really cool it's an interesting approach um let's keep going let's see where this goes here Back up a little bit. To a life consumed by slow decay. The grass was green. But I, I loved that. I, I loved how they uh, they were building and building. That you had that you had that classical guitar style solo going on from uh, from Gilmore. Um, all the keyboards filling off the sound bass, filling off the sound with the keyboards, giving it that nice warm, rich sound. The color switched up in the background from the blue to that like I guess like an orangish color. Really nice to warm up with it. And then right as it ended, everybody dropped out except for the bell and I think there was one keyboard. Yep, the piano. Yeah, piano and piano and the bell. That's it. That was, and everybody, in this case, everything went dark and then it'll come back to blue when uh, Gilmore starts singing again. Um, one thing I noticed about the bell, uh, he's striking the bell with a yarn mallet which is perfectly fine uh the mallet end the tip of the mallet is hitting the i'm gonna say the bell and people are gonna go well of course he's hitting the bell no the bell of the bell the upper part the, the uh where 
the uh, the top of the belt. He's hitting up there, but he's using the side of the stick to strike the edge of the belt at the same time. So you're getting two tones. You're getting the the resonance tone from the yarn uh, mallet head striking, and you're also getting a little bit of a percussive hit from the side of the stick hitting the ridge of the bell. And that's interesting. It's an interesting approach. I don't think I've ever seen anybody strike bells like that before, ever. I think that might be the first time I've ever seen that. So that alone in itself, that's pretty cool. I always love it when I see things being done for the first time because it makes me go, oh, wonder why no one else has thought of that before and I wonder why no one else has done it since, you know? Unless other people have, and I just missed it. I don't know, but I'm seeing it here, and it looks really cool. So, anyway, let's keep going here. Encumbered forever by desire and ambition There's a hunger still unsatisfied Still guitar work right there. Oof. Especially that ending. Man, that's good. Going up and up and up and up and up and up and up. Um, the higher up you go on a steel guitar like that, the harder it is to be precise with exactly where the note's gonna be because the space between semitones, the higher you go up, gets smaller and smaller. Like if you look at a 
Okay, uh, uh, I don't know how well this is going to hopefully illustrate my, my point. Um, I'll use my base for example. So you see up here, the space between frets is pretty, it's, it's pretty wide. You know, it, you got, you got a good amount of space. Now, as you go up the neck, you'll see that the space between frets gets smaller and smaller and smaller until you get up to like, you know, the 24th fret up here where you, I can barely put my pinky in there. You know what I mean? So it just keeps getting smaller and smaller. Now you can still keep going up. You run out of frets, but he's using a slide. You can keep going up and up and up and up and up and up, but the same problem's gonna happen. The, the space between semitones gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So he has to move the slide less and less and less and less to get to the right note. And it becomes far more difficult to be accurate. So I always admire when people playing steel guitar can get up that high and be accurate. And he was spot on accurate. That was really cool. That was super cool. I'm not sure who wrote this song. Uh, I have a feeling this is a Gilmore song. I, I, I got the feeling, but I don't know. I know, I know this is after Roger Waters. I know, I know this was not Roger Waters' project at all. I know he's he's gone by this point, so I know it wasn't him. But uh, I don't know. It might have been Richard Wright who wrote this. I don't know. It, so I'm leaning more toward Gilmore. I'll be honest with you. I, I I don't know, but it's a little mellower. I know that's more up Richard Wright's alley. Uh, no, it was, it, it's probably Gilmore. I'm, I'm going to go on a limb and I'm going to say it's, it's, it's Gilmore who wrote this. I'm going to go on a limb. I'm not sure about that. And there's a good chance I'm wrong. So, but it sounds to me like this is a Gilmore song. So it sounds really good. Um, let's finish this out and we'll get to the review. on those last two notes. Because he can't. <laughs> the ending they pulled a fade they did a fade ending on a live performance that's not easy to do but they pulled it off they absolutely pulled it off um it was good i it was really good it's a really good song i see the appeal i don't know if this is my cup of tea though i don't know um let me think about it and uh, let me come up with a score and the reasons for the score and I'll see you in the review. We'll talk about it. Well, there you go, folks. That was Pink Floyd with High Hopes. Uh, this was a request from Jason Cart and this is actually one of Jason Cart's three prioritized requests for the month of December for being a gold tier member on the Patreon page. So, there you go, Jason. I hope you enjoyed the show. Um... Okay, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give that an 8.6. Yep, 8.6. I feel great about that score. Let me tell you why. Why? Okay, now, let me first of all <laughs> say to all the Pink Floyd fans out there, feeling you, okay? Listen, I'm feeling you, okay? I am. But... Before you all slam me and you all say, this should be a 10. Listen, you're probably going to say that about every single Pink Floyd song, okay? Look, can we be objective here for a little bit? Just for a little bit, okay? Uh, I, I understand that there are a lot of diehard Pink Floyd fans up there who are going to insist that every single song that Pink Floyd ever wrote needs to be a 10, okay? And you guys are certainly entitled to your opinion. I'm entitled to mine, Okay. Uh, well, I, I feel really good about this 8.6. Let me also say off the bat that 
this song was really not my cup of tea. It really wasn't. It, it's not a song that I particularly enjoyed listening to. I mean, look, don't get me wrong. It's a great song, and I recognize that it is a great song. And I'm going to talk about all the good stuff I heard. It's just not up my alley. It's not something I would ever want to listen to ever again. It's not something that, you know, really strikes a... No pun intended. Nothing that really strikes a bell with me. Yeah, I know. That was terrible. Uh, I swear I didn't mean it as a pun, but it, it really doesn't ring a bell with me at all. I just, it's, it's a, but look, it is a great song, and we're going to talk right now about what makes it a great song, okay? First of all, uh, the chordal structure on this, it's simple. It is ridiculous. It is literally three chords the entire time. Ba -da 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 -da. It, it, that's all it is. It, it's the entire song. But like I've said before in the past, simple can be effective when it's done correctly. And they did this correctly. Now, how did they get away with using just three chords the entire song? By adding and taking out layers strategically at different points of the song. So you had the beginning with just, you know, piano and that bell, that bell. We're going to go back to it in a second here, I promise. So you had piano and then you added more voicings, you added more keyboards, you added guitar, you added voicings, you added, uh, you know, backing vocals, uh, bass came in, uh, percussion came in, and then things would be taken out and then brought back in. So there's always this evolution of layering going out throughout the entire song. That's how they could get away with it. I mean, and it sounded just fine because of all those layers being added and taken out, added and taken out, added and taken out. It was really cool. It was very strategically done, very intelligently done. So I got to give them all the credit in the world for arranging the song the way that they arranged it. Uh, that bell, man, that was constant, absolutely constant. It just... It never let up. I mean, there were times where it would, it would, they, would, they would have to take it out, obviously, but when it was in the song, it was constant. It was just on the end of two and the end of four. Every single time. And I, I dug it because it helped keep the, again, lack of a better word and no pun intended, it helped keep the pulse of the song going. Um, and it was very cool to see that switch up. Usually you would look for the percussion, uh, the, the kick drum in particular, and the bass player to drive the song forward. But in this case, it was a bell that did it. And that was cool. That was really cool. Um, David Gilmore's vocals on this. I like the lower register. Don't get me wrong, the lower register was cool, but when he went up into that upper register, Da, da, da. That part, man, that was cool. It was haunting in a way. It was so well done, so well executed. The way that he formed the notes and the vowels formations within his throat to get that warmth, it was really, really cool. Soothing in a way. Um, some people will say soothing, some people will say haunting, but either way, it was a, there was a softness in the voice that was very, very pretty. Very well done. Um, the, the the bass wasn't used a whole lot in the song. I noticed I was watching the bass player quite a bit. He was at points just kind of walking around between David and, and the keyboard. I'm just sitting there going, okay, um, he's not playing, obviously, because his hands are down at his side or his arms resting on his bass or whatever, so he's not playing. So he wasn't utilized a whole lot. But again, that goes back to my first point. Having it come in strategically at points just to add a little extra depth. It was really, really cool. It was really well done. And I have no, I'm not complaining about it. I'm not complaining about that at all. Um, I really don't have any complaints about the song. Um, how it was constructed, how it was performed, how it was executed, how it was written, um, how it was arranged. It all makes sense. It all was done very well. I mean, it, it was a great job across the board. And listen, I would not be giving this an 8.6 if I thought the song was bad. If I thought the song was bad, it'd be down in the ones and twos. This is getting an 8.6, which by definition is a great score. Um, 
I really don't have anything else to say about it. I mean, it, it, it was a great song. It's just not my personal taste. It's not something I would ever personally want to listen to again. But it is a great song. I can recognize objectively that this is a great song, okay? I'm also not going to stand there and blow smoke up your butts and insult your intelligence and go, Oh, this was a 10 all day long with every other Pink Floyd song ever written. Guys, if every single Pink Floyd song ever written was a 10, then every single song would sound the same. And they don't. There's a lot of variances. Some songs get 9s. Some songs get 8s. Some songs get 7s and 6s and 5s. Now, I will say, I don't think I've ever heard a Pink Floyd song that I would ever classify as bad. You know, I... Every Pink Floyd song I could think of, the, the worst I've ever heard Pink Floyd do was probably an okay, you know? But, you know, there, there's got to be some variances. And if you, if you can be objective, you can see differences in every single song. And you will see that there are some songs that are better than others. And that's why I'm giving this, not a 10, I'm giving this an 8.6. I've heard better Pink Floyd songs, I have. And I think if you're being objective and you're being honest, I think you will agree with me on that. So, 8.6, final score, I have spoken. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. Hope you all enjoyed the show. Hopefully, I was able to entertain you. If I was able to put a smile on your face and brighten your day, then I did my job, and I'm so glad I could do it. If you did enjoy the show and you would like to see more videos like this, feel free to join the fan base by clicking on that button down there. Yeah, you know the button I'm talking about. Click on that button, join the fan base, and become one of us. Now, for whatever reason, if you don't feel like clicking on that button, that's okay. I still respect you. Also, if you did enjoy the video, please feel free to give the video a thumbs up. It'll do me a world of good, and it will do you absolutely no harm whatsoever. Finally, if you guys do join the fan base, you will find a bell down there that you can click on. By clicking on that bell, it'll keep you up to date on everything happening with this channel, including when new content gets dropped. So, if you want to stay in the know, Click on the bell, and you'll stay in the know. Well, that's going to be it for tonight, folks. Until next time, this is David Heretic signing off, reminding you to stay fabulous and support each other. Later. Peace.